Heavenly Father, give you thanks, Lord God, for the opportunity, Lord, to lead, guide through your word. Pray, Lord God, that what we are inspired to do will be of your Holy Spirit, that it will be led by your word, it will be consistent, coherent with your word, and that it will build up and empower, strengthen the body of Christ and those who wish to be ministered that they would be fully furnished, Lord, with your word, and that they would be fruitful in their efforts. In Jesus' name. Thank you. So be it. Praise God. It's good to have you, Brother Pat, Brother Abe. All right, I'm going to be sharing with you a screen that... I'm going to bump that up a bit here. All right, so now the goal of this meeting that we have called is so that we can share and get on the same page of the philosophy of how we are going to work our questions. This is uh, only dealing with advancing education. This philosophy in itself is not intrusive on what anyone else is doing or how they're wording any kind of other course materials. This is part of our consistency that we use in advancing education. And more importantly, the purpose of this, uh, I, I don't know that it's a policy per se, but, but it's a consistency, I'll put it to that level, is because we're using inanimate objects to try to do a spiritual job. And here's the scenario. We have a forum, we have a college campus online that's basically programs. And our task is to try to analyze people's answers to questions that we generate, remediate them based upon their answers, and do this in a way that's electronic and it is a real challenge because this is a spiritual work that we're trying to accomplish and we i think we're a lot closer now than we've ever been with the understanding levels of what it is that we're trying to accomplish and also the understanding level of what it is and how we can accomplish it using this specific platform that we do now have. So it's also going to be, in theory, philosophy will be useful across the board to many other platforms or anything else that we're using, I think, when we take the understanding that we're going to gain from this meeting and apply it to uh, however we would choose to use it. No, so here's the consistency. The, the overall scope of things is we want to teach a Bible study, go through a sermon, and find a way to teach the curriculum, measure by the questions how well did someone receive this teaching curriculum, and then either by encouragement or encouragement with remediation based upon their answers to those questions that we carefully word, uh, give them further direction, further teaching, further instruction so that we can maximize their experience. So that all being said, we have the teaching initiative. We have, whether it's a video, or combinations of video and texts and uh, audio. So the teaching material is something that comes to us either by someone's sermon that we recorded, audio or video, or we get their text notes that they teach from, which is also very beneficial, or it's a Bible study that we have put together ourselves, or whatever the teaching implement is, we have that in the narrative section of our lessons. That is the meat of what it is that we're trying to accomplish. 
here's where the challenge of our programming and electrons, <laughs> we're asking them to do a spiritual job, if you will, in the oversight of it. So here's where our wisdom and our philosophy and our basic understanding really has to come into play. We have a mechanism. This mechanism is our campus that we have. We pre-program these questions with expected answers so that the program knows which ones to grade correct. And based upon the persons, the test givers, the students' answers, uh, we have the ability to tell the program what to do after that, whether it is a correct or incorrect expected response. And based upon the text that we are able through this program to offer, it will be either an encouragement for yay, a good answer, or it's an encouragement for this is how this answer is incorrect, this is why it's incorrect, and this is what makes it correct. So that's the challenge. But, okay, can we pause right there? Yeah, absolutely. I got a question on that aspect. Is that going to be an interactive part of the tests, or is that something that occurs after the test is finished? Perfect question, because here is part of our challenge. When we design these lessons to be mentored, then we have an interaction based upon the mentor's interaction. The program itself will not necessarily provide what it is, I think, the intent of your question. So there is a limited amount that we can do. We can read we address the, uh, we can forward them through links to greater in-depth understandings, but just the platform itself does not have that arm. Okay, I guess maybe what I was driving at, just to, to frame the picture a little tightly, a little more tightly, is that if a student takes a test and when they click finish and then they see the results, will the results have that kind of response yes this is a good good answer but not the best because a lot of tests especially on a college level you're going to get right answers in you know two or three of the cases but you want want to get the best right answer the one that is correct answer. so here's how we accomplish that as opposed to vanilla so indirectly there's two answers to your question <laughs> And I, and I would love to put a nice easy bow on it, but here's where our challenge comes in. We want to word our questions in a way that they teach. And mm -hmm. we want to word the potential answers in a way that they teach. Right, and that's, so, what, that's the part that, the administrative part that I have, you know, expressed my interest in engaging with, and that really with everything, I, everything else I do, that is, the part that I want to be involved with. Oh, amen. First job of the of the test is to measure their understanding of what was put out. That that's kind of the basic first job. Now, and that's part of the measurement process. Why is this not the best answer? Or if you're in multiple answer scenario, uh, we can put in the components. Okay. Uh, okay, so this particular lesson, I'm hoping that you can see nice and cleanly here. I'll pick up this size if you need me to. Maybe just do that right now. Uh huh. Okay. You call control plus? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now you should be able to read. Super. So here's our very basic level. This is in the what every new Christian needs to know level of teaching. And if we just pick for the fun of it, some answers, I'm not even reading it. So please don't be too amused by what I just did. <laughs> no, that's all right. You're so spiritual, Pastor Boy. Okay, so <laughs> that was the first time we tried to take that test. And I want to get to where we can control matter of fact let me just do this first i'm sorry i didn't have time to really put the meeting in its proper uh 
homework because I've been out of town for for a little while, and I have just barely rushed in with my suitcase, so I I apologize for that. Okay, I, don't, I forgot which one I was in, but I'm just going to pick remission of sins. Okay, now here. Okay, I can pick right here. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. I can pick right here how many times we're going to allow a student to attempt this test before we give them their answers. I want to convert these, Bill, from two yes. to one. I want them to go right away. I want them to see their answers right away. Okay. One of the options here is show answers after last allowed attempt, which, by the way, Pat, I don't know if you've heard this part yet. Uh, we are going to go back and redo our questions and answers uh, from Foundation Cornerstone and up based upon this new understanding that we have of what we can accomplish. Brilliant. So the show answers, we want it to be uh, right away. I want to keep the uh, attempts allowed at two before they are forced to reset their tracking information, that the, the information that we track on them. I don't care about a time limit. That doesn't bother me at all. Anonymous user attempts, I do want them. I don't... I want this to be absolutely free and I want this to be absolutely, I want every student to be able to do it whether they feel that they can set up a user account or not. The only problem is, is that we cannot track or certify anybody's responses if they do it anonymously. All right, so show answers. I want that, that's gonna be how we can set that up. I can go in and change those. So, if I go to edit exercise, this is where some of the magic happens also. This is where we're able to change the thing. You have to edit the exercise before you can get into this advanced option section. Though. So I want to change attempts allowed. I mean, we can keep it too. That's not a problem. Show answers, yes. So we take it off of the after last allowed attempt and put it on yes. So that means even after the first time, they're going to start seeing the comments and respect of their input. So I'm going to click OK here. Uh huh, of course. So now I go back. If I go to do this test now, which by the way, if you are changing the answers, which we're going to be doing. You don't, you just go to the lesson, which one am I on? Remission of sins. You can go to the exercises or you can get to it from the learning path. I like the learning path because everything's organized this way. Uh, let's see, remission of sins, here we go. I hit the pencil to modify. I go to the test, the exercise itself, I mean. And here I can change the questions. And now let me just hit one of these so we can modify it. If you're in a brand new lesson, Pat, you can set all this from the go as you're creating a new one. Mm -hmm. So here we have, we can edit the question and edit the answers. And I'm gonna show you both. I'm gonna start with edit the question. And this is where we want to word our questions based upon, uh, I need to back up another step, I apologize. We want to know what were the main points that drove the narrative? What were the bullet points that the creator of that lesson wanted to make sure every student understood from their lesson? With that in mind, we generate our questions to measure whether their, intended, their intention of, of what they were supposed to get, did they actually get it? So that's the, the basis of our measurement. Yeah, so it's a comprehension thing. Yes. And so it's not just necessarily copy paste a quote or, you know, anything like that. I want to really make sure that they understood why they're saying what they're saying. So I think we kind of rushed some of our questions the way we did it at first to try to get the finished product done. And thus, we're now going to the point where we're going to do a better job 
of writing our questions and, and, and responses and comments. So this is the first phase of what we're going to try to accomplish in the foundation cornerstone. It's, it's a retrofit, I admit it. Uh, as we go through in the foundation building blocks, as we are creating the new lessons in there, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. then that's the one what every Christian should know. And of course, Cornerstone is what every new Christian should know, that these questions uh, that we're doing in Cornerstone have to be reworked. Some of them are great, but some of them I think we, we just threw together five questions for the sake of having five questions and so be it. So what are the main points of the lesson? What, what was it that we wanted to make sure get accomplished? That drives the question content to make sure we're measurement of what understanding and comprehension is. Now, with that, we want the questions to teach and to be positive. We don't want to, we want some to be funny because we want to, to decrease eye abrasion. Uh, you know, we don't want people to get too mundane, bored, going through these things. So I don't mind having a sense of humor every now and then for a potential answer. Uh, as long as it is within uh, taste and, and reverence. So we word the question. Remission of sin may be defined as. Well, that answer has to come from the narrative. If every question that we have, every answer should be found in that narrative. It can be reinforced in a video. But if the video is teaching something that's not in the narrative, I don't want to have a question that forces you to watch the video but doesn't have the text to back it up in the narrative. Does that make sense? Yep. That was one of the problems prior to that. And and if I might add, one of the uh, the thing, one of the elements that has to be considered closely is the fact that you use terminology or certain um, definitions in the question or in in the in the context of the um, I forget the in the teaching passages and what is answered or what is questioned the questions have to have the same terminologies yes or use the same references because when I was going through the course one of the things that caught my attention was um, in the written context there would be statements then the, that the answers you know were non sequitur because a different term would be used that changes the whole meaning of things. Right. Now, there's two points to that, two ways to look at that. We want to teach in the positive since we're dealing with new Christians or, or new people. We want to teach at the fifth grade level. So we want to make sure that there is there. The other side to that coin is to measure understanding. Um, can they rephrase it in a way that shows understanding of the concept and you know what I'm saying? So yes, exactly. But the thing about it is, there are key words and phrases. That oh, absolutely. Make the make the answers coherent. That that's and, what we want to do because we are at the five grade level, fifth grade. Excuse me. We yeah. want to make sure that those key words are completely. There's totally fluid right in there. It's there. It's matches. And I agree with the hundred percent. We want to change things if there isn't that cohesion. We want it to be there. And then we can, if that major point that drives that question is strong enough, then we can word that question in a way that uh, we can see whether they can answer it from another angle. But the main point, now there, we can wait a question, wait as in give it more credence, more power, if they answer that particular one right. So... To the point that you're saying, we keep the cohesion, that is worth more, that question's worth more to the overall end result than another question later that might ask a rephrasing or find a way to do this that they can, you know, reword it in another way. Mm -hmm. But if it's if it was forced to one question or the other, absolute cohesion. We need to go through and, and look at this again and, and, and make sure that the questions are worded with that direct cohesion. Um, so we can wait each question. I'm about to show you that aspect. I think you're familiar with the waiting aspect of, uh, mm -hmm. how many points is that question worth? Right. So we have, we can reword the question. Let me hit, just hit cancel here. 
I'm going to go back in here, go down to the question, modify it. Now let's go into the edit answer. Now this is where we can get a little bit more, uh, just full the screen out here. Okay. So we have the weighting of the questions because we don't want somebody to shotgun a multiple there's unique answers. There's multiple answers. If somebody goes through with a multiple answer and just clicks all of them, we don't want them to get credit, full credit, uh, just because they're shotgunning it. Mm -hmm. So here, as you can see, these are the potential answers in this column. We want these questions, excuse me, we want these potential answers to teach as well. And we want them to be positive. We want there to be cohesion. It's either there or it's not. And, and then we want we tell the computer in this expected choice column which one we're calling correct. So that's how the computer knows how to grade it. Now, the comments in this section, this is the section where we can do some teaching as well. If the answer on this particular question, this is an incorrect answer because we told the computer that this last one by this radio button is the expected answer. So here we either enforce a correct answer or we remediate that chosen incorrect answer and explain to them why that is an incorrect answer by proving what is the truth. You know, what is the goal of this question? reinforce it so there's two things that we do here we're going to get to the point where we can have for more information click this link and when somebody finishes the test remember we said show expected answers or, or show uh, uh, comments we want them and the first run as soon as they hit finish test to be able to see these comments right away if they selected a wrong answer, this is incorrect because. And then the weighting. So correct, uh, reinforce the point that the reason for this question, that the original narrative writer, this is what they wanted. This is why they wanted it. This is the main point that they taught and we're measuring. So here in the weighting category, we can play with how much, how wrong is their answer? This particular type of question is a, is a unique answer. Only one answer is correct. When we deal with uh, multiple possible correct answers, then we can weight them, whether it's half correct, mostly correct. Uh, if it's a grievous error, like if somebody picks uh, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. Well, we want to flag either their mentor or someone that there is an issue that needs follow up. So we can weight them very heavily, or we can weight them instead of a negative 12, we could say minus five, so that the answer wasn't as detrimental than just going clean across the board and saying uh, every incorrect answer is minus 10 points and every correct answer is worth positive 10 points. So here's where the graduation factor comes in of how bad is it or how right is it? And that's the best way I think we can use this platform to do a spiritual job. It's, it's gonna require us to go through everything again. I understand that, but I think we can do a much better job. Yeah. So that's the theory, the philosophy of what we're trying to accomplish, how I think we can try to accomplish based upon the tools and resources we have available to us. As far as mentoring is concerned, if we wait the answer to a point where it causes a failure, which is basically 70%, and we, we weight the, the total amount of possible points to gather on all correct answers as being 100, then we can say 
Well, and this incorrect answer was just somebody picked a funny one and they wanted to be a joker. Okay, well, I'm not going to deduct a whole lot of points for that. But if somebody really, if we're ferreting out a, a root issue wrong with doctrine here, then that particular, there has to be a flag raised somehow, either to the mentor or to the course manager that's going to work with the anonymous people as best as possible anyway. Uh, let's let's talk from the, the lines of somebody mentoring. The mentor is going to see the score. Now, when you finish the test that, that submit that button, you're going to get a running score. Your total is X out of 100. Now, they can have the choice to go back and do it again or reset their tracking data if they're a user and they're enrolled in the course. And then they can start as if it's brand new. All that tracking data is gone. So they're learning from it. And they want to have the pride of having a 100% on all their quizzes. Great. You know, I like that. So there's still a learning component there. They're still growing. They're still learning. Now, with that being said, Pat, does that address the question that you had initially? Uh, yes, it does, in, in both the aspect of the context of uh, the body uh, of, the, of the teaching material and how the questions are ordered or answered or asked, I should say. Um, yeah, I, I would like uh, very much to be in that process and, and uh, help with those things yeah yeah that does address a lot of them okay now if if there's something that comes up well let me let me back you up just a little bit here pat you're not set up right now as a course manager to where you have access to all of this stuff and i'm going to change that right now okay. uh let's see Mahoney, you're probably somewhere in here. Oh, I was one page off. Not bad. Okay, I have two users of Pat Mahoney. <laughs> I'm assuming the later one here, enrollment date of April of this year, that's your latest user, right? That's probably the one. <laughs> okay. I, I tried to do it one time and didn't realize I wasn't signed in. So I don't know how that got two of them in there if I wasn't signed in. But anyway, let me merge these two together. I can do that on the platform. OK. Uh, bear with me. I think what we're going to do is bite sized pieces as far as the workload. We're going to share it up to sign it up. And let's say, for example, Pat, you start on chapter one mm -hmm. and, and you just take lesson for lesson, question for question and uh, work our way through. Let's say there is something that comes up. Text is an immediate contact, and email may be the better, more comprehensive contact. If you were talking about the flow of the product, uh, does it require approval? Does it, you know, mm -hmm. editing and such of this nature? I, I'm just going to trust. I don't have to worry about anybody putting anything crazy in. So uh, you're going to have the ability to do a hot change. Okay. If you make a change, it's going to be live. If if but uh, what what I do want is an email that says uh, I changed lesson number, and of course it's FCS one hundred one dash, you know, then the chapter, then the lesson number, and then you can say I changed. You get the lesson number, and then the the question number, and that I changed potential answer or whatever the changes were. If it's a global question change, you can say, I just changed question two. Or okay. That, that will flag me to do two things, review it. And then the other thing will be, I've, I've got to keep a list of all of our changes so that when the next course revision comes out with the next increment, I can make sure that that's incorporated in the overall product. All right, well, I'll see about, uh... Carol set me up with something. She's, you know, what do they call that thing in, in Microsoft Office? Um, spreadsheet, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah spreadsheet queen. Ah. So I might have her set me up a spreadsheet so I can keep that stuff um, compiled. 
Very good. That way, if we lose any kind of any any information, we can go back and bring it back. Yes. Again. The way that I suggest for people to do this is to go into Microsoft Word. You take the whole lesson. You can just highlight it, copy it, paste it into a brand new document. That way you have your starting point. If anything happens and it blows up, it goes crazy. Not only do we have our monthly backup, but we also have you, you would in your workflow have an immediate backup right away. There are times that that word processor that it's it's very minimal. Uh, the one that the platform uses in itself. Microsoft Word is far better in its spelling and its grammar checking and, and just everything. So, so that's how I, I want to do that. So why don't we just say right now, Brother Bill, yes. until I get my flow chart together where, remember we talked about having a, a compartmental flow chart of who's working on what. Yes. Um, I, let's just assign Pat right now, chapter one of FCS 101. And and just let him start on the that very first one, chapter one. And then as you have opportunity, Pat, you can just do that communication with me. Okay. So it'll be more of you're working with me when it comes to the revising the the uh, the questions and answers. OK, good. So then what I will do, what I plan to do then is I will go through that block and then I will um, keep the changes in Word. Let let the, the website keep what it has. Yeah, uh, I'll give you um, forward you that in a, in a document. And that way you can review it. And if you think, yeah, that's fine, then either I can go ahead and punch it in or you can as you see fit. Yeah. I mean, once you agree with everything being good, it's probably easier for you to do it on your end. Well, either way, I, I it won't take long for us to get to the point where you won't have any navigation errors. You won't have a, a how do I get this accomplished? I know what I want to do, but I can't seem to find a way to do what I wanted to do. Once you get that feel for the whole platform, it took me a long time. Yeah. Once you get that feel for the overall administration aspects of that, then it's just going to be hot stuff. You, okay. you, you, you'll just work on it and tell me what you did. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, I mean, everything, you know, when it's a work in progress, it's going to have a few rough spots. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and this this is just another one of them. So it's we're just making it a better system. I think like, so. Not like we failed in anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good analysis. Yeah. I like that. So you're going to have to put the list together of the bullet points. What were the major points that we wanted to make sure every new Christian was to get from that narrative? That will drive your questions because we're going to have to measure to make sure that those people understood what we intended them to understand. And that's the job of the questions. The job of the potential answers is, is to make sure that, uh, is to measure. That's the measuring stick. And it's also the remediating stick. The comments that we give is the remediation and the encouragement. The comments that we give based upon the potential answers. So we want to always teach in the positive. We want to always be positive. Right. It's OK to be funny and it's encouraged to be a little funny because we want to break any monotony that may come up as people are going through this. Yes. As far as. Spelling and grammar. Uh, again, you're writing to a fifth grade level. Do your work in Microsoft Word. Transfer it over. You're going to get to the point where you'll get the feel for the philosophy of waiting. The waiting. The This is worth more power. This is more points. This is a bigger point than another. So let's say, for example, you look at a lesson and there's only three major points that it was wanting to be made. OK, then you make sure. I don't care if it has three questions. But if you think that those points are big enough that re they would require two questions because the point that's made is just bigger. Baptism, uh, does it require water? Is it spiritual baptism? Is it water baptism? OK, that's one aspect. But is it essential? 
uh, is it how you enter the body of Christ? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, then that's another aspect of it. And then is it Jesus' name versus any other way? Well, that's another aspect of it. So, so just to say to somebody, the major teaching point is baptism essential salvation. It's yes, but there are sub there's sub components to that that need to be addressed and are worthy of their own question. Absolutely. And and you want to weight them with the understanding that a 70% or less, excuse me, a 69 percentage point total or less flags a fail, right. supposedly. <laughs> and if that's the case, that is our flag, our communication feedback to tell us that we need to work with this person a little more. And that, in the nutshell, is how we're asking the the electrons, this platform, these programs, to do a spiritual job. It does not take away the role of the mentor. The mentor is a major part of it. We're flagging the mentors. We're 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 including them to the point where we're counting on them. Okay. Now, my my other question is. While we're going through this process of upgrading the cornerstone, how do we want to go about as far as people that, that are working on these studies? Everything is as it is. If somebody finishes it today, obviously they don't have to go back and redo it, although we would encourage them. If we change a lesson, like the, the deaconship and the, the eldership, we would encourage them to go back through it for two reasons, for themselves as well as how to teach others. So it, it is, as we get them finished, like I was saying before with Pat, we're going to flag um, updates, you know, where we, we put together a chapter at a time or, or the overall PDF version and things of this nature. They're going to have those little sub pages, sub lessons. We got to make sure that they all get updated, too. I mean, we have it on the website, each individual lesson in the document section. When that gets updated, I need to update those. And that's part of why I say Give me the course number, the lesson number, the question number, all that. Wherever there's a change, I need to be flagged so that I can change all those other aspects, too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of cogs moving yeah. around at the same time. Mm -hmm. 